Okay, so in this video we will be looking at the applications of parametric differentiation. So suppose the point P moves along a curve in the xy plane, and suppose we know its position at any time t is given by x, which is a function of t, and y, which is a function of t as well. Okay, it's parametric equations. Then dx by dt is known as the velocity in the x direction. Okay, and dy by dt is the velocity in the y direction. Okay, so the rate of change is the velocity in the x direction. And the rate of change of the y function would be the velocity in the y direction. Well, with that being said, we can then work out the formula for the magnitude of the velocity. So the size of the velocity is therefore the square root of dx by dt squared plus dy by dt squared. So we square both dx by dt and dy by dt, add them together and take the square root. That will give us a value out which gives us the instantaneous speed of the particle. So we can work out its speed by using this formula here. Okay, let's look at a couple examples to illustrate how this would work. So let's look at this first example. Okay, the position of a golf ball t seconds after being hit is given by the two equations. Okay, x equals 10t and y equals 30t minus 5t squared. Okay, where t is the time, okay, after seconds, t seconds. So we're going to find the speed of the golf ball when it first hits the ground. That's what we want to work out, is what speed was the golf ball doing when it first hits the ground. Well, in order to do that, we need to work out after how many seconds the golf ball did hit the far, did hit the ground. Now, x is the horizontal component and y is the vertical component. Okay, so solution. Well, if the golf ball hits the ground, then y had to be zero. Y is our vertical component. So therefore, if it hits the ground, there should be no height, which means y equals zero. So that means if I factorise and solve this for working out t when this equals zero, okay, I get this factorised form here. Therefore, I get two possible answers when t equals zero. I mean t equals 6. Now we shouldn't be surprised to find two answers here because t equals 0 means that at the start of the process the ball was on the ground, which does make sense because when it got hit it would have been on the ground to start with, then 6 seconds later the ball would have hit the ground for the first time after being in the air. So we're going to use the value t equals 6 here. So with that being said, okay, we still need to work out our speed, which means we want dx by dt and dy by dt, so I'm going to differentiate both dx uh, by t and I'm going to differentiate y by t. I'm going to get dx by dt equals 10 and I'm going to get dy by dt equals 30 minus 10t. Now at time when t equals 6, okay, so after 6 seconds, okay, then my change in the x component, okay, the speed of the velocity in the x component, that remains 10 because it's constant, okay, that's not going to change at all. But my dy by dt, I'm going to substitute t equals 6 in here and I'm going to get the answer negative 30, okay, so it is at the velocity of negative 30. I'm going to use these now to work out its speed. So I'm going to use the formula, okay, so the magnitude, okay, which is the speed, okay, I'm going to do the square root of 10 squared plus negative 30 squared, okay, and I'm going to square root it, and that's going to give me 31.6 meters per second. Okay, so I'm finding out these values at time when t equals 6, which I found from using my initial data. And then I've got the speed that the ball was doing. Okay, the total speed was 31.6 meters per second. Okay, let's look at a second example. Okay, so a cannonball was fired, and its position t seconds later is given by x equals 10t and y equals 2 plus 9t minus 5t squared. Now, what we know is the target is 2 metres above the ground. So what question 1, we want to find out how far away the target should be if the cannonball is to hit it. And in part 2, we want to work out what is the speed of the cannonball when it hits that target. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. Well, question 1 is asking us to find how far away the target is. Okay, if we know it's 2 metres above the ground, we want to know how far horizontally away it is. So we want to work out what x is. But in order to do that, we need to work out the value of t when it is 2 metres above the ground. So I'm going to use my y to help with that, because y would have been equal to 2 metres at that point. So y equals 2, that means we're going to make this function here equal 2. I'm going to rearrange this, okay, and I get two values out, okay, if we factorise and equal to 0, I get t equals 0 and t equals 9 over 5, okay. So I'm going to use when 
t equals 9 over 5. Again, t equals 0 is just when the thing starts its process. Okay, so we're not too uh, worried about that. Okay, so we're going to take when it hits the target, okay, after it was fired, which is 9 over 5 uh, seconds. So at t equals 9 over 5, okay, we wanted to work out how far away it was, which means we have to use our x function, the horizontal, which is x equals 10 times t. t is 9 over 5, so go to 10 times 9 over 5, which would give me 18. Okay, so I know that at t equals 9 over 5, then the target should be placed with its centre 18 metres horizontally from the cannon and at a height of 2 metres. Okay, so I worked out that it should be 18 metres horizontally away from where the cannon was to start with, still at a height of 2 metres. Okay, so that's question 1 part done. Question 2 asks me to work out the speed when it hits at this point here. So again, I've worked out that t is 9 over 5. But in order to work out the speed, I need dx by dt and dy by dt, so let's find that out just now. Okay, so dx by dt equals 10, dy by dt equals 9 minus 10t. When I substitute 9 over 5 into both of these, well, dx by dt stays at 10, dy by dt equals negative 9. To work out the speed, I'm going to use my formula, okay, I'm going to do the square root of dx by dt squared plus dy by dt squared, so that's going to be the square root of 10 squared plus negative 9 squared. And that's going to give me an answer of 13.5 meters per second. Okay, so there's two examples on how we can use this formula to work out the speed on very physical, real-life examples. Okay, thank you.